And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting episode of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and this is episode number 111. That's right, 111 episodes. Uh, it's been a lot of fun so far, uh, and uh, well, I'm looking forward to having a lot more fun tonight. Hopefully, you'll have some fun with me. Join in, and let's just have a great time. Now, if you're joining me for the first time, this is Drink with Rick. This is a stream of consciousness kind of show. I do have some show notes. They're right here in front of me, to the side of me. I don't always follow them because this show is not about me. The show is somewhat about the wine, but the show is really about you and me getting together on a Saturday night, just having a great time kicking back, relaxing with our favorite libations, whether it be wine or beer or whatever it is that you want to drink, water, soda, it's okay. It's okay. Just just as long as you're here with me and we're just getting together and having a great time. You can watch us live. You can join in the chat live on Facebook. Facebook page is Drink with Rick. You can also watch it live on YouTube at Drink with Rick. Also on Twitch, Twitch is Drink with Rick, the number one, Drink with Rick one, and on Twitter at Drink with Rick. Of course, the podcast, if you can't watch live now, the podcast goes out on Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That is right now, we're on Daylight Time. And you can catch it at drinkwithrick.com. You can subscribe. If you go to drinkwithrick.com and click on the subscribe page, you'll get a page like this. And you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, your favorite Android device, Stitcher Radio, Blueberry.com, iHeartRadio, Deezer, Amazon Music, PodcastIndex.org, and by email. If you click on by email and subscribe by email, just put in your email address and you will get the latest episode of Drink With Rick as soon as it drops in your inbox. And I promise, no salesperson would call. will call. <laughs> That's It's just for the... Uh, sake of, of getting you the podcast. Now, we've got a very exciting show tonight. I'm going to be opening up a wine that's a different kind of wine, very different wine. And for those of you who don't like wine too much, you might like this this kind of wine. This is a very, very different kind. And uh, well, we'll, go, we'll get into it. I'll show you a little bit more about it as we go along. We're also going to uh, do some, of course, we're going to toast some birthdays, some anniversaries, and by the way, if you're in the chat and you are having a birthday or an anniversary or know someone who is, pop their name in there, the date, and we'll toast it too. I, I, I love to toast anniversaries and birthdays and all kinds of days. Also, we also, I'm going to show you a video. We've got a little video review of, um, from an event that we went to a few years past and is actually related to the national days that we're going to be toasting tonight. Uh, it's one of the national days that we had today. So I'm, I'm eager to talk about that, and we, well, we might have a surprise guest. We might have a surprise guest for a few minutes, so stick around. We're going to have a lot of fun, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get right to this here. Let me, let me check the chat here first of all, see who's in the chat. My good friend Ed is in the chat, Ed Anthony. Ed says, another exciting episode, 111. Come on, be, come on, come several, be with Rick and Ed. That's right. There you go. And I keep, bring, I keep grabbing the wrong mouse to like that. But I'm glad you're here, Ed. I'm really glad you're here. By the way, I did get your book. I showed it off last week, as a matter of fact. The one that you sent me, the 1001 Wines that, uh, that You Must Taste Before You Die, I've got it right here with me, too. And I've been going through the book. It's an amazing book. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you very much for it. You didn't have to do that, my friend, but it is much appreciated. Um, I, I've skimmed through a little bit of the book. I haven't, had, I haven't tried, had a chance to try the wines of the book yet, but uh, some of them are a little on the pricey side, I think. But um, I'm really enjoying the book so far, and I really, really appreciate it. I'm going to show it off again tonight, I think, for those who missed it last week. Uh, show a little bit of it and show you uh, what, uh, what that book is all about. Also, let's check the other chats. I keep gra grabbing the wrong mouse here. Let's check the other chats. Uh, nothing going on on YouTube so much, but we do have folks watching. Uh, on Twitch, folks in Twitch, oh great, <clears throat> CM Cinder's in the chat on Twitch, and uh, good to see you CM Cinder, XVM4 is in the Twitch, says hi Rick, and hi right back at you XVM04, I really appreciate it, I'm glad you're here, stick around, Nano X Echoes is here, and he says hola XVM, and uh, 
and uh, also uh, Ola uh, back at you, Nano X Echo ZZ. I, you know, I, I know you're talking to XVM, but I'm glad you're here anyway. We're gonna have we're gonna have a good time, and you're gonna like this video. I think you're gonna like this video. It's very cool. Um, uh, let's see, what is that? You mom sentiment. You mom sentiment says good evening, Rick, and good evening right back at you. You mom sentiment, uh, and uh, let's see, uh, who else we got here? Uh, Okay, Tom Antio's in the chat too. Great, I'm glad to see you here, Tom Antio. So we've got a good crowd tonight, and uh, please, uh, and if you're on Twitter, you know, here's the only thing, uh, if you're watching live on, and I forgot to mention this earlier, if you're watching live on the website at drinkwithrick.com, there you go, drinkwithrick.com, uh, you, can, you can watch it live. We don't have a live chat going there, but if you click on the post for that live feed, you'll get a comment box down below, and you, we, I'll respond to comment. It won't be right away, because I don't see some of the comments till later, but you can respond. I mean, you, you can comment, and I'll respond later on. Also, the email address is rick at savoyamedia.com. You can contact me at rick at savoyamedia.com. I received a really nice email uh, from, from a gentleman uh, earlier today. I was commenting on the show, and he had a question. He had a very important question. I'm going to share that with you as well in just a little bit. I think it's a very, very good question. It would take a, basically a whole show to answer it, but uh, I'm going to try to answer it as best I can in a truncated time because, well, to be honest, I'm trying to keep this down to 90 minutes or less if possible tonight. So we'll see how successful I am with that, but uh, I'm going to try. I'm, I'm going to try. Uh, trying to get us out of here at a decent hour, right? In the meantime, let me show you what it is that we're going to drink tonight. This is a very interesting wine. This is called Stella Rosa. Stella Rosa is a wine. It's it's from it's imported from Italy. Now the thing is about this Stella Rosa wine is that it is not what you think of as a traditional wine in the sense of some of the reds that we've been drinking, some of the whites, that sort of thing. This is more of a sparkling wine, sparkling wine, almost like an Asti Smanti kind of thing. You know, it, it might more, a little more, more bubbly than what, than what you, uh, what we've been drinking. But this is a very interesting wine. Now, to be honest, uh, I have had some of these Stella Rosa wines. My wife, Chi introduced this to us and everybody in the family loves this wine they open them up we've had a few they, they have a lot of different flavors of this wine and we've uh, tried a few uh, very very nice very good wine the kids love it and when i say kids are all over 21 <laughs> uh, so not kids anymore but uh, and the wife likes it of course and i and i like it too i like it too so i we, I have not tried this one. I have not tried this one. This is Stella Rosa Black, but uh, we're, I'm going to try this one for the first time tonight, and we're going to see what this is like. I, I'd like to share this uh, with you. And uh, let me go ahead and read the back label of this wine, because this is the back label. This Once again, it's a different a few ways, because you see that unlike a lot of the other wines, where the back label only has uh, the... the well, it, it doesn't really list all the details for nutrition, but this has a whole nutrition facts here, which is basically treating it more as a food than a wine. You know, wine is kind of a food. Let me go ahead and read this back here. It says, Stella Rosa Black, grapes for our delicious Stella Rosa Black are harvested from beautiful vineyards. This refreshing wine reveals deep dark, dark uh, let me try that again, take two. This refreshing wine reveals deep dark color and is combined with natural flavors of ripe blackberry, blueberry, and raspberry. Stella Rosa Black is seductive, rich, and full-bodied with a hint of sweetness. Served chilled with fresh fruit, cheese, spicy cuisine, and desserts. And it says, celebrate. See what they did there? Celebrate life with friends and a bottle of Stella Rosa Black. And then it says it in... Uh, Italian. It repeats that in Italian, which I'm not going to read it in Italian because I'm I really don't speak Italian, and I well, maybe we'll do it later just for fun. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it gets really slow here. <laughs> I'm not anticipating that, but anyway, the nutrition facts: there are supposed to be five servings per container. Officially, five servings per container. Serving size is five fluid ounces, 150 milliliters. Now, of course, they have never seen me drink a bottle of wine. <laughs> So I don't think this applies to me, uh, to us. Um, and they're 110, oh boy, 110 calories per serving. So uh, we're talking about uh, 
uh, about 600 calories if I drink this whole bottle. And I'm not going to go through all of the, the uh, specs here, but uh, there is 5% alcohol by volume in this 750 milliliter bottle of wine. So what that means is that this is a, about half, oh, less than half, less than half the alcohol content of the wines we've been drinking, sometimes maybe a third, <laughs> Like the wine we had last week, the wine we had last week was very good, but it was, uh, well, 14.2%. So this is roughly uh, roughly about a third of the alcohol that's in that. So uh, if you were looking to see me drink the whole bottle and get sloshed, uh, I may... I may very well drink the whole bottle uh, if it's an e if it's as good as, as everyone says it is, but uh, uh, I, I, I don't think I'm going to get close to being sloshed. <laughs> so you're not going to see, you'll be disappointed if you're here to see that. So <laughs> I've had I've had wines with higher alcohol content in them, and we, you've seen me, well, some of you who have been there from the very first episode have seen me drink uh, a, a lot of that wine. So... Uh, we won't go into detail right now. Anyway, so let me check the chat one more time before I open up this bottle of wine. And uh, Ed, I'm, I hope you're having a really good week. How's your week, by the way? I hope you you did uh, you, you had a great week. Uh, Ed, do you like uh, free comic books? You ever been to a free comic book day? Stick around. Uh, we're we're gonna have that's one of the days we're gonna toast. And uh, I've got a video to show about that. That's uh, pretty should be pretty interesting uh, for you. Uh, let's see, nothing going on, on on YouTube, and the action's happening on Twitter. I'm uh, not Twitter, excuse me, uh, Twitch. Uh, Nano X Echo ZZ. Hola, beba toda la botella. Did I say that correct? You know, my Spanish is really terrible, too. <laughs> Every language. I don't do so well with the English either. You know, I, I sometimes I just wix my words up in English, and it's just not, uh, yeah, I, I don't have a great command of of any of these languages, but I do speak wine. Okay, I drink wine. Can't say I really speak it either, but I drink it. So anyway, enough enough terrible um, dad jokes from me. Let's get to opening up this wine, and then we'll learn a little bit about this wine because I think it's it's going to be very interesting. We're going to try this out. Now, we have tried a couple of these other Stella Rosa wines chilled. This one is not chilled. Uh, I don't know how that's going to go. Let me get my, here we go. I've got my trusty Veneto aerator from the Veneto Wine Lover set, although I'm not so sure we're going to need a, an aerator for this tonight. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you, I, we have one more thing i got to show you. All right, this is what we're going to pair it with tonight. We've got some foods to pair it with. This is what we're pairing it with. This is, um, oh, this is melting, by the way. <laughs> Didn't survive the pre-show. <laughs> it's melting. It's some kind of ice cream thing that my wife gave me. She'll she'll fill us in on that in the chat later. But uh, it's melting and it's getting all over the other food. Thank you, Chi. Um, that that's going to be interesting. Uh, anyway, so we have some steak. We have a really nice steak. Uh, all these are leftovers, by the way. Uh, some Pizza Hut pizza. I don't know what's with the Pizza Hut these days, but and we have some cheeses. I've got to keep that well away from the ice cream too. We have cheddar. We have. Uh, what do we have here? We have the Toscano. This is the Toscano with creamy coastal Syrah that we've had a few times. And this is a Dubliner from Ireland. So we're looking forward to trying these out to see how they pair with the wine. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and open this bottle of wine. And it's a twisty cap. Would you like to smell the bottle cap? Actually, hmm, okay, very fruity. All right, we're going to take the, you know, I don't know if this wine really needs aerator in it, and it's kind of loose in the in the bottle, so I'm going to hold on to it. We had that happen before, and we'll pour just a little bit, a little bit of this wine in there, just a little bit. Oh, boy, does that look kind of fizzy? Well, it is because going through the aerator, the aerator is injecting. There's already a fair amount of air in this because it's kind of a, it's, it's kind of a, uh, sparkling wine but adding the air in it with the aerator makes it a lot fizzier so uh, I, I don't know if maybe that was the best thing to do maybe I'll take that out at some point <laughs> pours faster anyway so uh, so this is what we've got we've got this wine it's very nice little color to it very nice color 
And let's set it aside for just a moment. Let it open up for a minute or two and let's find out more about this wine. So I went to their website, Stella Rosa Wines. They have quite a website going here, Stella Rosa Wines, and this particular one, and they make a lot of different wines. They make a, we've had a, I think the first one we tried was a peach. It had a peach flavor to it. It's a peach, kind of a peach wine. And it did, it tasted a lot like peach. We had one that was, uh, I think, a, uh, was it a raspberry? I think it was, uh, it tasted a little bit like a raspberry. There was a blueberry, the blueberry, we had the blueberry wine, which tasted like blueberry. And we had, uh, what else do we have? Uh, we, I, we had another red that kind of tasted, had a combination of tastes like strawberry and, and uh, uh, raspberry and cherry and things like that. Anyway, this one, I'm not sure about because I mean, we've never tried this one. I'm trying that one tonight. So I'm going to uh, read a little bit from their website, uh, Stella Rosa Wines. Uh, it says, Stella Rosa Black. Uh, it says, overview, slip into your sexy and seductive side with Stella Rosa Black. The sexy and seductive side. <laughs> right. Uh, a sultry, semi-sweet, semi-sparkling red blend from the Luxury Collection. So this is from the Luxury Collection. The Luxury Collection. Mm. There's a mysterious nature about this one. About you. That is under... About me? About you. That's what it says. It says there, there is a mysterious nature about this one. About you. That is undeniably alluring. Well, who knew? Um, flavor profile. It says blackberry, blueberry, and raspberry. And um, the food pairing recommendations that they ha have here... Our fresh Havarti and Manchengo cheeses, blue cheese stuffed hamburgers. Oh, I should have had one of those tonight. <laughs> Wasn't prepared. I, I, I was, I was un, totally unprepared for this wine. Blue cheese stuffed hamburgers, bratwurst bathed in beer, dark chocolate souffle, and black walnut ice cream. And according to this, and if you can see, um, I think on the front, I'm going to show you the front again. See that little in the label, and the looks like a gold label in the lower right-hand corner? 90 points. It says 90 points. I didn't read that part. 90 points, gold medal, and best buy. Tastings.com, Beverage Tasting Institute. The Beverage Tasting Institute gives it 90 points and a gold medal. So, um, so this should be a very, very, very interesting wine to drink. Now, before we go any further, let me uh, check the chats one more time, see what's going on there. My wife, my lovely wife, Chi, is in the chat. She says, no, don't drink it all. We want some. <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll see. And she says, oh, no, the ice cream melted. Yes, it did. It did. Uh, I could have told you that, that it was going to melt because, uh, you know, we're under the lights in the studio and you brought it to me. And by the way, my wife prepares these. She prepares these ahead of time. Uh, she brought this one up about 15 minutes before the start of the show. And, uh, yeah, so it had plenty of time to melt. Sorry, sorry, I don't, gee, but that was uh, very sweet of you to do that, by the way, actually. It was very sweet of you to do that. Um, and she does this. She pre preps them for me every week. So she is the official food prep. Food prep? Chef? She, she does. She's the decorator on the show. There we go. She says, sorry, I should have put that on separate container. <laughs> yeah, well, it's okay. We, we live in order. Ed says, I was thinking that would be the case, Chi, unless, of course, he thought to get a backup bottle. No, um, actually, Chi bought this one. She bought this one. I looked at it and I said, you know, I actually had another wine that we were going to try tonight. It's over here somewhere. It's down there. Um, <laughs> but uh, I saw the Stella Rosa Black and I said, we haven't tried that one yet. Let's do that. Let's do this. And, and because they, they were asking me, Chi and, and T and Tommy were asking me before, why don't you review one of these wines? It's a perfect wine to review on the show. So that's what we're doing tonight. Uh, it was their suggestion, and uh, we're going to try it out. Gina is in the chat. Oh, my, great. My, my sister Gina is in the chat. I'm glad to see you here. Gina says, I'm interested to see how this goes. I've never liked any Stella Rosa I've had to date. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, Never liked any of the Stella Roses. I, I, I need to ask you why. Why specifically you didn't like any of the Stella Roses? So we'll have to find out. And I just lost my audio. Is it, uh, how's the audio over there? Can everybody hear me okay? It's always something, isn't it? It's always something. 
and uh, I think we're still on live, aren't we? Are we still on live? Let's see. Uh, let me switch over here to Facebook. There we go. So, so why? Um, I'm just curious. Why? Uh, why haven't you liked any of the Stella Rosa wines? I, I mean, it's not a, like I said. It's not your traditional wine by any. Uh, you know, it's it's a wine. At least, and it's from Italy. It's from Italy, an Italian wine. But um, Ed says, "I hear you. Thank you, Ed. I appreciate it." It's, um, I don't know, something had it cut out with my, uh, I think it's just on my side. I think it's just on my side. Anyway, it's always something, isn't it? It's always something. Anyway, uh, on with the show. Can't let it hold up the show. So this is what else I found out about the wine. I was on the Stella Rosa website, StellaRosaWines.com. By the way, stick around, uh, Gina. I think you'll have, uh, I think we're going to have some fun here. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. And uh, we're gonna we're doing we're gonna doing a couple of test runs for for guests on here because uh, well uh, I think you know why I mentioned it to you uh, about a week or so ago so I'm doing some test runs to prepare for that sort of a thing and I uh, I'm being a little cryptic for everyone else but I don't want to spill the beans I don't want to I don't want to spoil this so um, so you know hopefully we'll we'll get that worked out with the the streams and and uh, the guests bring in the guests and uh, we'll be able to do what I really want to do in a couple weeks. So let uh, let's get back to the wine for just a moment. Uh, the Stella Rosa Black. Let's see. Oh yeah. So I, I hunted around. The Vino gives it three point nine stars out of five stars, and uh, they price it at around. They said the Northern Italy Red starts at around thirty ninety nine. Except when I pulled it up, I pulled up their age for the Stella Rosa Black, the 2019 vintage, and I think the one I have here, I could not find a date, of a vintage, <clears throat> a year on here, <clears throat> excuse me, so um, <clears throat> speaking of sound, I think I'm the one that's going out, I haven't had any wine yet, though uh, this did not have a date on it, so um, I think it's uh, no vintage, and they had a no vintage page up there, but I, didn't, I, I don't have that up here right now. But basically, overall, they give it 3.9 stars. Now, uh, Wine Searcher, I went up on Wine Searcher's site, and Universal Wine, Fine Wine and Spirits in Florida has it for $10.98 a bottle. Market View Liquor in New York has it for $10.99. Gordon's Fine Wine and Liquors in Massachusetts has it for $10.99. <coughs> Lucan's Wine and Spirits has it for $10.99. That's in Florida. Uh, Saratoga Wine Exchange in New York has it for $138 a case, which comes out to $11.50 for a bottle. Um, and it looks like the median price here, Vine Republic in New Jersey, $11.98. B21 in Florida, $11.98. Um, Napa Caps in California has it for eleven ninety nine. Uh, Valley Fine Wines and Spirits in Connecticut has it for eleven ninety nine. It it kind of runs the. It looks like it runs around between uh, eleven and twelve dollars a bottle consistently. Now I'll tell you what my lovely wife she bought it for because she bought this wine. She paid nine dollars ninety nine cents for it at our local Sam's Club in Pineville. North Carolina. That's what she paid for it. So uh, it sounds like it was a pretty good deal uh, based on the pricing I see here. But we'll really know once we taste the wine. So let's give it a little swirl. Let's give it a little whiff and then give it a little taste. Oh wow. Right off the bat, a mix of berries in this thing. A mix of, of berries. Now they were <clears throat> Well, I probably uh, should probably be drinking the wine right now. Throat's getting dry. Okay, right off the bat, I'm I'm smelling some cherry and raspberry in here. But it's a mix. It's a very it 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 smells sweet, but it is a rich mix of berries, and um, with a little hint of chocolate, almost like a like a chocolate cherry kind of thing. Let's give it a taste. Wow, <clears throat> talking about, yeah, <coughs> talking about a mix that very juicy. This is this is kind of a fruit forward wine. I would say, 
Uh, it's it's rather fruit forward. Let's pour a little bit more of this. <clears throat> now, some of the others I've had have ta had a single taste, like a single berry. This tastes more. This is a very eclectic mix of berries. It tastes like um, blackberry, cherry. I'm tasting some uh, blueberry. I'm I'm tasting some strawberry in here. I'm, I mean, it is a real mix of both red and black berries. And I mean, that's why they call it black, Stella Rosa Black, because it's supposed to be black berries. But I'm tasting a lot of different berries in this thing. And it does taste, it does have a hint of chocolate in it. Mm. Now, once again, and it's kind of a sparkling wine, kind of a foamy wine right now because I've been running it through the uh, aerator. And um, it's, it doesn't have much of a finish to it. I'll say that. It's kind of a, a very light finish. But it is, it's, I wouldn't call it bold. I'd call it kind of a medium. It, it's not really, I don't really want to call it a bold wine. And, uh, but there, there, I can taste a little tannin in it. It's not overly tannic. It's a very, I, I think it's kind of light on the tannin myself, but it's kind of a semi, it's, it's kind of a semi-sweet wine. Like they said it is, it is kind of a semi-sweet wine. Although on the finish, it's not, um, well, maybe it is a sweet. Yeah, I guess it is on, on the finish. It, it, it's a little bit, it's it's not a full sweet sweet wine. It's kind of semi sweet. It's kind of middle of the road. It's not it's not real. It's not a dry wine. Okay, this is not really a dry wine at all. So, but a mix of berries in there. It's like um, it's like if it, you know what it's like if you took a handful of Skittles and popped them in your mouth. That's what you get. <laughs> well, flavor wise, I mean, you're talking about tasting the rainbow. Or you're talking about tasting this. That's that's. Uh, it's very a very interesting wine, and it's uh, yeah. I, I should probably just take that aerator off. This uh, that's kind of pointless. <laughs> it's kind of pointless at this point. Let's go back to the chats for just a moment before we start doing this tasting uh, the, the tasting because of the food, the pairing. Because uh, let me show you a quick shot here. <laughs> it's starting to look worse. <laughs> it's really starting to work. This is really melting big time. It's starting to look pretty bad over here. So I guess I better, um, uh, it, it's like a tsunami of ice cream over here. It's, it's just going right into the food. So <laughs> before I start that, though, let's go back to the chat for just a moment. Um, and, uh Okay, so so Gina, what do you, I, I was going to ask you what uh, why specifically do you not like this wine? That's I, I would, I'm really interested in your take in, on this wine now that I've tasted it, and I, I don't really have a problem with this wine. This is not a wine. Look, this is not a wine that I would drink seriously with dinner. I you know you know I prefer the dry reds and things like that. This is this is really more of a dessert wine. This is kind of, in my opinion, this is really more of a dessert wine. Um, Although the dessert over there that I have to go with this wine is looking a little rank right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go back to Twitch for just a moment. Let's uh, see. I got to catch up here on on Twitch a little bit. And uh, your mom sentiment says, "I believe uh, Echoes is saying to drink the whole bottle." Oh, is that what he's saying? Bebe toda la botella. That's what it is. He's telling me to drink the whole bottle. Well, I just might do that. I'm just, it's an easy wine to drink. I might do that. And we have a lot of toasting to do, so stick around. We have a lot of toasts tonight, a lot of toasts. Um, so we'll, we'll get to that in just a, a little bit. Uh, Seam Center says, better eat that first, probably. Uh, I, it's probably a little bit late for me to eat this, actually, but we'll, we'll see. All right, let's get to the pairing. And this is what... Let's go ahead and try it with the steak first. Uh, try the steak that's not in the ice cream. Let's try a little piece of this. A little, a little piece. There we go. All right. My mouth is kind of dry. I've been talking. I haven't really been drinking. And by the way, the steak is, the steak is really, really good. I really like this steak. My wife prepared another grill last night. It was very, very good. Mmm. Although I have to chew a little more now because it is uh, leftovers. Mmm. 
good state. Hmm. Um, it, I, I'd, I'd say it makes a better dessert wine than a have it with a steak wine. That's just my opinion, but that's, uh, that, that's just, uh, <clears throat> that's just my opinion. Uh, let's see. So she says the, uh, the mochi flooded, the wine is bubbly. Yeah, it is. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to clear the palate for a minute. <clears throat> Got to. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and try, go back to camera three here for a moment. Let's try it with the Pizza Hut pizza, at least the side of the pizza that is not soaked in this. I'm seriously, it's <laughs> half this pizza, half this pizza is soaked in this uh, stuff. I guess I'll have to try it from uh, the side or something like that. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's a good pizza, by the way. I mean, Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut wise is good. Okay. Let's see. Um, yeah, once again, I don't know that I would really pair this with pizza. It's really more of a dessert. <laughs> it did say, I'm going back to this thing, it said to pair with meats and cheeses and stuff like that. But to be honest, I mean, if you like a sweet wine and you want to pair it with meat and cheese, go for it. Um, me, I just, I'm not up for, for sweet wines to begin with, but pairing sweet wines with things like steak and, and pizza and things like that, it's just really not my thing. Not my thing. So let's go back and look at this. Let's see what we got. I'm going to clear the palate first, don't I? Don't I? Yeah. Let me clear the palate first one more time. Okay. Everybody's so quiet right now. They're just waiting to see what's going to happen next. Or they've all fell asleep or they've all left. Hopefully, just every, you're all just waiting to see what, what happens next. Could be anything. Could be anything. All right. So, <clears throat> let's pair it with the cheese. I'm going to try it with the cheddar first. I mean, it kind of, it's kind of hard to screw up uh, wine and, and cheddar pairing, isn't it? I think so. It's kind of hard to screw that up, but you know what? There's always a first time, right? Let's see. It's a little better. I got a little better with cheese, a little bit, a little bit. I got some more water. This stuff's too sweet for me. In large amounts, it's too sweet. Maybe, maybe, is it too late to open that other one then? Okay, so let's try it with, uh, oh my, I'm going to feel this tomorrow. Okay, let's try, let's try it with the, to, the uh, this is the Toscano with the uh, creamy Syrah. Now, this has a Syrah wine in it, and we tried it during the last couple of weeks, and we tried it with a Syrah the first time around. And went perfect. It was a perfect pairing of Syrah. This is not a Syrah. Okay? This is not... This is not a Syrah. This is not... Uh, I'm not sure what this is, really. Actually, that's not too bad. That's not, that's not too bad. I'm... There are other wines that pair it with first, but this is not, that's not too bad, really. It, it is, and I'm going to have some more of this water. And I don't think I have uh, cleared the palate on enough. <laughs> All right, one more cheese to go. Let's get through this last cheese. Um, this is what I've got here. This is a Dubliner. This is an Irish cheese, Dubliner Irish cheese. You know, I forgot there was one thing I forgot to do tonight, and that was to do my ding. I did forget to do my ding tonight, didn't I? Hmm. I'm talking about the ding. That ding. Hmm. Double and cheese in this. Um, I'm not sure. I'm gonna pour a little bit more and see what happens. Oh boy.
Not, not bad. That's not bad with the cheese. It's not bad with the cheese. It's okay. Give me some water. It's not too bad. Whoa, okay. So, uh, this is the wine that we're going to be toasting with tonight. <laughs> oh, well. It might be a 45-minute show. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, so what? Are, let me get back to the chat for just a moment. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, XVMO4 says open the other, Rick. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I would accept. Um, I, I, that's going to blow my wine budget for the month. <laughs> four wines in four weeks. Uh, I don't think I'd afford to open a second one. Um, Seam Sender says I only like cheddar in certain situations. I don't know if I drink a ch dessert wine with cheddar personally. Uh, to be honest, yeah, this is really more of a dessert wine. I wouldn't really call it a, a cheese. All that, that's what it said on the website. It says pair with all these different cheeses. I'm like, well, I'll try it once. Why not? I tried it once. Um, I'll save. I'll save the final review for the end of the show. Okay, final review in the end of the show. Let, let's have a chance. I'm going to have a chance. Give this wine a chance. Give it a chance. Uh, your uh, Let's see. Your mum sentiment says, I always quite like a strong cheddar with my dessert wines. I don't mind a sharp cheddar with dessert wines either. That, that, a good sharp cheddar is, uh, is, it goes pretty well with a lot of different dessert wines, I, I would say. I don't know if it's the best choice with this one. It didn't actually go real bad with this one. It, it, it just was not, was not my first choice of a pairing, that's all. Just not my first choice. If it was my only choice, I'd still drink this wine. <laughs> there are a few wines that I wouldn't drink uh, if it was handed to me, but for the most part, um, it's 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 all good. All right, so uh, I think that does it for the pairing. For, yeah, definitely does it for the pairing for now. Let's go ahead and go right into the birthdays and the anniversaries. Actually, we have to go straight to the anniversaries because I don't have any birthdays. Yes, I don't have the. Um, the fireworks for the uh, birthdays because we don't have any birthdays this week. We have a bunch next week, but not this week. But we do have anniversaries. And the first anniversary, and I will cue the fireworks for that. The first anniversary is for my good friends Betsy and Scott. Betsy and Scott. In fact, I was I, I, I should have toasted them last week. But their anniversary was uh, on Sunday, the 5th. Oh, it's the 25th, I'm sorry, Sunday, April 25th. Uh, I missed that, but uh, I want to toast them, give them a uh, post-anniversary or belated anniversary post and say happy, happy anniversary to you, Betsy and Scott. Scott and Betsy, happy, happy anniversary. And we're good friends, Scott and Betsy Onger. And we've I've, uh, I've mentioned uh, Betsy and Scott uh, uh, many times in the past. Also, their son uh, Alex goes. Uh, he, he attends <clears throat> App State University along with my son Tommy, and they are friends that have grown up pretty much since childhood. They've known each other since childhood. Old childhood friends, great people, and uh, and Alex is a fine young man. He really is. <clears throat> so. Um, where were we? Okay, anniversary. That was the anniversary. I also want to give a special congratulations. And I, I'm, you know what? I didn't pull the. Uh, I had a website pulled up for this. I've got to find it again. But um, this was a. Let me see if we can find it here. I know I bookmarked it. Where is it? Uh, here we are. Okay, my friend. My good friend Tim Bartlett. Tim, who's who is in the chat quite a few times. He's he's been in the ch uh, chat quite a few times, watched the shows, and um, he um, his he has a couple of daughters. He, I mentioned his I mentioned his uh, one of his daughters uh, several times. Uh, who she has a an Instagram. Uh, she's she's an Instagram influencer, very much into fashion, and um, that's Katie Kate Bartlett, and uh, her she has a sister Sarah Bartlett. Now Sarah. Uh, now, the, now, Tom, I, I guess i got to run this back a little bit. Tim has been working on a little project for Sarah. Now, Sarah started this business called Canyon Couture. And uh, she, uh, th this has to do with uh, uh, taking some, some uh, slightly used clothes and, and selling them and distributing them, that sort of thing. It's, uh, she has this business going with, uh, with clothing. And 
Um, she's been renting a booth out. Uh, she has a, a, a spot where she's been running her small business in. Well, she uh, she's decided to kind of sink all of her savings into uh, going mobile with this. And so she has purchased, she purchased a school bus. You know how a lot of people are doing this now, that purchasing old used school buses and they're renovating them for various things. Because that's what she and her dad have been doing. And Tim has been, uh, for the last few months, he's been on this project and he's been shooting video as he goes along, showing the progress of it. It's really fun to watch. He's a, it shows pictures and videos and stuff. But um, he's, he's going through and he's renovating this whole bus to turn into a, like a boutique. A boot, is it boutique? Boutique? I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's, it's like, a, it's, it's like a, a, a clothing store on wheels, you know what I mean? Uh, a boutique. Really cool. And uh, they're hoping to get this off by, by, uh, by June, I think. Anyway, she entered this. Uh, Sanford University, their Brock School of Business, they hosted their 13th annual region's New Venture Challenge business plan competition uh, in, in April. And basically, this was in partnership with uh, one of the banks there. And they, what they do is they provide a, a, an opportunity to, for students for, to develop their entrepreneurial skills. And I'm going to read a little bit from here. Uh, they develop their entrepreneurial skill, entrepreneur, boy, that's my reading. Entrepreneurial skills, that's only 5% alcohol, folks. Entrepreneurial skills and display their talents while competing to win startup capital to launch their businesses. I'm reading this from the uh, Sanford University Brock School of Business uh, website. So, uh, and this year, Sarah Bartlett took home the top prize with her business, Canyon Couture. So she won the top prize at this challenge with this. And uh, I want to say to, uh, to, I want to say to Sarah and to her dad, I want to make sure I didn't spill anything there. <laughs> anyway, where was it? Oh, um, I want to say to Sarah and her dad, congratulations, congratulations on winning the top prize at Regents New Venture Challenge. And uh, I wish you all the best success, the greatest success with your business venture. And uh, here's to Sarah Bartlett. Congratulations. Congratulations. I think that's, that's excellent. That's, that's just excellent. I, I really think it's very cool. Let me check the chat one more time. See what's going on in the chat. Nothing. Uh, let's see. Uh, <sighs> Let's see, Nano Exec, uh, uh, I can't read, yeah, no bebes mucho vino. Okay, and if somebody could translate that for me, I would be much appreciated. <laughs> um, XVM04 says, are you a fan of Pinot Gr uh, Grigio's, Rick? I'm drinking one right uh, now myself. Okay, so you are drinking a Pinot Grigio right now. Grigio, uh, um, the white is, uh, it's okay, I've had a couple, they're, they're, they're decent. Uh, wines. I prefer a Pinot Noir. Now, you know, you know, that's one of my favorite wines here. We've had quite a few of them on the show as a Pinot Noir, but I'm not averse to a Pinot Grigio from time to time. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it, and it depends on the, it depends on the um, vintage, it depends on the, the winery too a little bit, because I've had some that are okay, some that are mm, not so great, and then I had, I've, I've had um, one or two of these Pinots that are that are really, really good, really phenomenal. So it kind of depends a little bit. Um, you, okay, your mom's sentiment says salute is to toast. Ah, right. You know what? I should have, and that's salute, salute. Okay. In, in, in Italian, it's salute. Yes. In Italian, it's salute. That's right. <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know. 5% alcohol, folks. That's all it is, just 5% alcohol. Boy, am I feeling punchy now. I know what it is. It, no, I don't. <laughs> I, didn't have, I didn't have any wine before the show. I did not. Saved it all up for this. Yes, yeah, salute is to toast. You're right. And I don't know what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking about that, and I apologize. Uh <laughs> When you're doing a live show, it's 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 all uh, it's all live. Okay, uh, <laughs> this is going on hell fast, isn't it? Okay, so we've I've still got the I still got the fireworks going on, uh, don't I? All right, I've I've got to um, 
I've got to turn off the fireworks for a minute because I have, uh, by, by the way, this is what we're drinking. If you're just tuning in, this is Stella Rosa Black, Stella Rosa Black, and it is a mix of cherry and uh, blackberry and blueberry and strawberry and all kinds of berries in there. It's very, a very interesting mix of all kinds of berries. And uh, it's, like I said, it, it's like putting a handful of Skittles in your hand and, and, and chewing on that for a while. That, that's what it tastes like. It really, it really does. So... Anyways, <laughs> it does. It tastes like I'm tasting the rainbow. I'm tasting a liquid rainbow right here. Yeah, that's about what it tastes like. So anyway, uh, where were we? Okay, um, yes, I do have another toast, and this is for, this is more of a somber toast. Just I, I, I want to, I want to uh, change, switch gears for just a minute just for a minute and talk about something serious and it, it is related to alcohol actually now my you know, uh my and we've talked about it before my nephew lester I had uh, my nephew lester lester bellabaus he uh was uh he was coming home from from work one night this was uh back in 2017 he was coming home from work one night on the highway it was in orlando on the on the uh, expressway and uh, he was uh, rear-ended by a drunk driver and it was with such great force that uh he was killed uh, my nephew lester and it was a great blow to all of us. He was very close to a lot of people. He was close to our. He was close to all of us in our family. Um, he was just. He was somebody we all loved and cared about. Just a fine, fine person, and uh, just a joy to be around. And hey, hey we were we were drinking buddies. <laughs> we were, and and uh, Lester was uh, 30, 30 years old when he passed away. I want to say that. He passed away on May 3rd, this, uh, this coming Monday, uh, would be May 3rd, 20, 2021, uh, but on May, May 3rd in 2017, uh, he, he passed, passed away, and this was, from, uh, this was due to a drunk driver who was, I, as I recall, a multiple offender. He shouldn't have been in a car. He shouldn't have been driving anything. I don't know if, he, I don't remember what he was driving, I think it was a truck or something, but, um, Anyway, uh, Lester, uh, Lester left us way too early, and um, May 3rd is uh, his anniversary, the four-year anniversary of his passing. He was 30. He would have turned 31 in December. He was born December 6, 1986, uh, passed away on May 3rd, 2017. Here's to my nephew, Lester Balabalos. you Lester and to your memory Lester left behind uh, his wife my niece and uh, two young children my my uh, grandnephew my grandnephew and my grandniece and uh, very very young kids so it's, it's just a tragic loss for all of us anyway uh, I uh, let's see what else I think that's all we have it for anniversaries and things like that and congratulations. I think we, we've got most of that covered. I think it's time. Let me check the chat one more time. Check the chat one more time. And Ed says boutique. boutique. Is it boutique or boutique? I think it depends on where you're from, right? A boutique on a bus? That's what Carl's Cowboy Boutique should have done. They still would not have found any dissatisfied customers. Here, here. That's right. A boutique. A cowboy boutique. Uh, we need more of those, actually. What Ed's, if you don't know what Ed's talking about, I think we did this, um, didn't we do this uh, some weeks back? I showed you a short film that I've made with my friends uh, called Cool Carl's Cowboy Boutique, and uh, I showed it here live on the show, and um, I'm not going to show it tonight because we don't have time, we're running short on time, but uh, we we had a great time doing it, and it's kind of a spoof, it's kind of a spoof on a basically a non-existent boutique for cowboy wear. For, and it was, it was very funny. It was one of those man on the street kind of things. And uh, 
uh, people had no idea what we were talking about, and it was just so uh, it was, it was off the cuff. It was live, and we just had a lot of fun with it. Anyway, one of these days I'll, I'll show it again, but uh, yeah, it does bring back some memories, huh, Ed? Let's get back to Twitch for just a moment, and let's see. Um, XVM04 says, sorry for your loss. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And uh, Nano uh, X Echo says, no hablo italiano. That's... Uh, 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 that makes two of us, actually. <laughs> that makes two of us. And I understood what that meant. Well, that makes two of us. So I'm right there with you, my friend. Uh, your mom <laughs> sentiment says, my condolences. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's much appreciated. Okay, so what do we have going on now? Oh, yes, it's time for the National Days. And this is what I want to get to, the National Days. This is a lot of fun, folks. All right, May 1st. I've got to tank up for this, don't I? By the way, we're drinking this out of my Galway Genuine Crystal Glass from Ireland, given to me by my employers at ByToyRadios.com. Uh, very nice glass. i got to get rid of it. You know, I'm, I'm going to get rid of this thing. It's too fizzy for that anyway. There we go. Let's just cut right to the chase, right? <laughs> Boy, i got a mess to clean up later, don't I? Okay, so uh, May 1st, which is today for another hour. May 1st is National Loyalty Day. National Loyalty Day. Uh, there's a lot to be said for loyalty. There's not that much of it around these days, but there's a lot to be said for it. A lot that needs to be said for it, but I'm not going to say it all here tonight because you don't want to hear any one of my rants, and we're already, uh, we only, we're already an hour into the show, and, and I haven't gotten halfway done to what I want to do anyway. So... <laughs> Here's a National Loyalty Day. Be loyal. Dogs are loyal. You know, we can learn a lot from dogs. You know, they, they could teach us a lot about loyalty. They really could. Uh, May 1st is also May Day. May Day, May Day. Yes, it's May Day. Today is May Day. It's also no, it's also, also no. It's only 5% alcohol by volume, folks. It really, that's... Uh, yeah. Um, it, it's, uh, today is also National Mother Goose Day. Yes, Mother Goose Day. Mother Goose Rhymes, who doesn't love a good Mother Goose Rhymes? Who didn't grow up on Mother Goose Rhymes, right? Mother Goose Rhymes. Here's a National Mother Goose Day. Let's see. Uh, National Chocolate Parfait Day is today. National Chocolate Parfait Day. Let's check on the status of this ice cream, folks. I got can three. There's there's the current state of our ice cream. There, it's a it's called a mochi. I think is what it's called. It's got it's got this uh, outer shell of of uh, uh, I think it was rice something, and then there was some ice cream in the middle, which is now more like ice milk or something. I don't I don't know. It's supposed to be the dessert to go with the wine dessert wine, but uh, doesn't look like that's happening now. <laughs> national chart what i would not give for an, a good chocolate parfait right about now uh national chocolate parfait uh, day is today it's also law day today is law day a day for law a day for the law law day law it's also national school principals day national school principals day Silver Star Service Banner Day. And there are a lot of these, so I'm just going to run through them, folks. It's, it's Kentucky Derby Day. First Saturday in May is Kentucky Derby Day. Anybody watch the Kentucky Derby? I did not. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not watching the Kentucky Derby. I'm busy doing show prep for this. Kentucky Derby. First Saturday in May is the Kentucky Derby. It's also National Fitness Day. First Saturday in May. And you know what I did to celebrate National Fitness Day? I took a walk. I did. I took a walk with Tommy and Cosmo. We took a little walk. I got in some fitness because I knew I was going to be eating. I was going to be eating this, uh, this right here. I was going to be eating that or most of it, and I was going to be drinking this, whatever this is. So that uh, that's what I. I was thinking ahead, folks. I had to get in some fitness, burn in some, burn in some calories before I packed some on for just for the show. 
Uh, National Scrapbook Day is today. The first Saturday in May is National Scrapbook Day. It's also National Homebrew Day. First Saturday in May is National Homebrew Day. A lot of day, a lot of national days for Saturday. May is a popular month for national days. May 1st is a popular day for them, to be sure. National Homebrew Day. Homebrew. Brewing your own wine. Or, excuse me, brewing your own beer and making your own wine. Okay, it's only 5% alcohol. Come on. Ed, blame it on the wine. Um, <laughs> National Homebrew Day. It's also Join Hands Day. First Saturday in May is Join Hands Day, which I think we're doing virtually right now. Joining hands. Right? Let's all join hands, shall we? National Bombshells Day. First Saturday in May is National Bombshells Day. Do they mean that in terms of uh, an actual bombshell, or do they mean that in terms of a bombshell? Like, uh, uh, yeah, well, I'm okay. Let's not go there. This is a family show, folks. National Start Seeing Monarchs Day. First Saturday in, Saturday in May is for National Start Seeing Monarchs Day. And we're not talking about the monarchs uh, in, in the... Uh, in the palaces, we're not talking about the royalty. We're, we're talking about uh, monarch butterflies. And I have a monarch story, but I'm going to have to say that for another time, I think, because we're just running out of time. But we used to grow monarch butterflies. We used to, we used to have them in our, our uh, we had a butterfly garden when, uh, when we lived in Florida, Movido, and we used to grow the, butterfly, uh, the butterflies. It's also National, uh, National Play Outside Day. The first Saturday of every month is National Play Outside Day. Did you play outside today? I took a walk outside, but I tell you what, it was a beautiful day. It was a re oh, here, here where we are in Charlotte, North Carolina, it was a beautiful day. Just a perfect day to go play outside. And I should have gone and played outside, but I was uh, inside trying to take a nap. <laughs> Playing my shot, trying to take a nap. Uh, anyway... Uh, yes, National Play Outside Day. Now, the next national day we have coming up, let me uh, check the chat here before I start with that. Let's see, we got uh, your mom's sentiment says, say hello to your loyal dog for me. Echoes, uh, he's talking to Echo, okay. Um, and uh, your mom sentiment says, uh, Discopas, Echoes, Saluda, a Papi, Dimi, Parte. Okay. Oh, he's talking to Echoes. Okay, that's all in Spanish. <sighs> Let's see what it's got going on here. On uh, okay, Ed says the glass stings almost as well as when it's empty. It 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 does, which tells you the quality of the. No, it doesn't. It, it, <laughs> quality of the wine. It doesn't. Uh, I just made that up. <laughs> okay, where were we? Okay, so Saturday, today, May first, two thousand twenty-one is also National. Comic book, uh, uh, excuse me, I, I messed that up. National Free Comic Book Day. It's Free Comic Book Day, folks. It's Free Comic Book Day. And you, you've heard me talk about Free Comic Book Day before. I've talked about it a few times. On the first Saturday in May, everyone goes around to the comic book stores, and they give out free comic books. Free comic books at the comic book stores. And uh, it, it was started as a way to kind of help boost some sales from the local comic book stores, but it turned into a big national thing. I think it's starting to go international now, too. But uh, Free Comic Book Day, uh, Tommy and Tia and I have, in the past, participated in it. Now, because of the last year or so, the last year or so, we've all been kind of in, kind of in uh, cocooned in our little homes and everything because of COVID-19, and they had to pretty much cancel Free Comic Book Day. Now, I don't know if they did it this year. They did it last year. Uh, they canceled it, but uh, or postponed it, I should say. This year, I don't know if they really did or not because we didn't go outside. Uh, well, we did for a walk, but we didn't go outside. Okay, whatever. Yeah, you know what I mean. So uh, we didn't go outside to go hunting down for free comic books. But the next best thing, in honor of free comic book day, I have a video to show you that my son and I, Tommy, that my son Tommy and I made, it's only 5% alcohol by volume. It really is. That's what it says, 5% alcohol. Uh, okay, so anyway, we have this video to show you. And this is uh, our review of Free Comic Book Day. This was done in 2017, a couple of years before the, the, uh, the pandemic of 2020. 
is this is our review of free comic book day this will tell you all you need to know about it there is free comic book day Hi, I'm Rick. And I'm Tommy from the freestuffshow.com. And this is Free Comic Book Day. Free Comic Book Day is a popular event for families across the United States. On the first Saturday of every May, comic and sci-fi stores around the country hand out free comic books to the public. It's an event that brings friends and family together to celebrate one thing, comic books. Not just any comic books either. These are editions printed exclusively for Free Comic Book Day that are handed out only once. That's right. You can expect to see special prints from almost all of your favorite comic book publishers, including Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, Bongo, Archie, and much more. The important thing is that there's something here for everyone. Don't get carried away, though. Depending on the store, you may be limited to only a few issues so that there are enough to go around. Some stores will only allow you as much as one to three comics, but others may allow you to make off with one of each available. It really depends on the location. Of course, what matters is not the quantity of free comics, but the fact that you're able to enjoy the excitement with fans everywhere, young and old. That doesn't mean it's wrong to try and maximize your haul. If you and some friends are eager to get a taste of everything that there is to offer, suggest each person pick different issues. This will ensure that you have a variety. Another tip is to visit multiple stores and pick different comic books at each one. This works well if you may be making the trip alone. Of course, if you're not alone, it still doesn't hurt to try. There is always a substantial turnout each year. Sometimes there are lines spanning the entire store, even going out the door. That's a lot of comic book lovers. If you want to make sure your picks are available, get there early. If you want to be even more prepared, you can always visit the Free Comic Book Day website before the event. They have a complete list of every comic that will be available at www.freecomicbookday.com. Comic books aren't the only thing to be excited about. At some locations, they hand out other free goodies, such as posters or pins. Some comic book stores feature artists and cartoonists that will set up shop to advertise their work. It's a great opportunity to meet some new people with great talent in your area. It doesn't matter if you're interested in comic books or not. As we've mentioned before, the point of Free Comic Book Day is to bring friends and family together with something that is accessible to all ages. You never know, you might even find a new interest in comic books. But if you don't, there isn't any loss. After all, they're free. And you can't be free. This has been a review of Free Comic Book Day. You can access this and other reviews at our website at thefreestuffshow.com. You can also subscribe to our podcast at thefreestuffshow.com or at iTunes, Blueberry.com, Stitcher Radio, and Google Play. I'm Rick. And I'm Tommy. Thanks for watching. And that was Free Comic Book Day. That was our review of Free Comic Book Day. And um, that's what it's all about. So I, I probably should have just gone on with the video instead of trying to explain what it was all about because that, the video would make more sense than me, especially after 5% alcohol by volume. So anyway, that was free comic book day. So uh, let's see. I, I, there were people asking me questions about that. Let's see. Uh, your mom sentiment says, what's your favorite comic book day? Uh, what's your favorite comic book, Rick? And... My favorite comic book, uh, I, you know, when I was a kid, I used to uh, like a lot of the Disney comic books, you know, Donald Duck and Scrooge McDuck books and stuff like that when I was when I was a kid. And so I used to collect a, a few of those, and I used to like to read the, those, the Scrooge McDuck books. I, I always thought they were pretty cool. As I got older, I, I was really more into things like Fantastic Four now I, I did have a, a couple Superman comic books, but I never never really got into to things like I didn't really get into Batman too much. Spider Man I I never was a big Spider Man fan. You know I I was really more into things like Fantastic Four, 
and I, there were a few other comics that I collected over the years. Now, there is one thing. Now, when I was uh, working at WFL, I think that was about the time that they killed off Superman. And uh, not the first time, yeah, <laughs> killed off Superman. So they had that big uh, issue where it was the death of Superman. And I went ahead and I, I bought a copy of it because I knew it was going to be collector's edition, a collector's item at some point. So we had a bunch of us at work that would go out. And as soon as this thing hit the shelves, we all went out and bought them up. And I was fortunate enough to get my hands on one of them. I think after they were gone initially, they started selling like on eBay and whatever for, for, for like a hundred, couple hundred bucks. And I, I had the opportunity to sell mine. I think I bought my, I think I paid for like five bucks for my copy. Well, but maybe a little less than that. And uh, I had the opportunity to sell it to somebody for 50. But I, I said, nah, nah, I just want to hold on to it. I still have it. I still have it. Death of Superman the comic book. It was in a black. And I, I never opened it either, I don't think. I don't think I ever actually even opened it to read it. I, I think somebody else, one of my other buddies did so we could read it, but um, I, I don't think I ever opened mine. So it's been, it's remained unopened in its black pouch for, uh, I don't know, how, when was that? It was uh, 19, I want to say it was 1992, 93, something like that. It was, I, I've, I've had it for, for many, many years. And to be honest, it's, I think it's over in the bookshelf somewhere, hiding away. <laughs> uh, Tom Antio says, uh, this was so long ago, I still remember the comics, though. Okay, so uh, there is one more thing I want to do with Free Comic Book Day, because we're going to celebrate, we're going to toast, I haven't toasted Free Comic Book Day yet, so we're going to toast Free Comic Book Day, but I have a surprise. Um to help me celebrate to toast free comic book day, I have my son Tommy standing by, who was, of course, the co creator of the Free Stuff Show um, and the Free Stuff Show podcast, and who is also uh, who is the co producer of that video. So I have Tommy on. I, let's see if we can get him on the line. Let's see if we can get Tommy on the line here. I'm going to try and call him on the Skype line and see if he's available. Give Tommy a call. And see if he if if he's if we can get him in here. We can Skype him in. There's Tommy. There's my son. Let me get him in here so we can all see him. And uh, whoop. <laughs> well, let's see. Almost got him there. Okay. There's my son, Tommy Savoy. Tommy, how are you doing? I'm doing great on this great Saturday night. Well, I'm on a terrible delay, so I have to wait till you stop talking before I can talk again. That's my cue to t start talking again. Well, I'll tell you what, let's do a quick toast to free comic book day. You got your glass ready? I got it. You got, you got your glass ready? Okay, great. Um, we're going to toast free comic book day. I'll make sure I got your audio here set so we can do that. Um, hold on just a moment. Let me make sure I got your audio. Okay, got your audio. All right, so let me get us both in here here uh, for this toast. We've got to have us both in here on the toast. There we go. No, we're not go because uh, technical issues, folks. All right, let's, let's go ahead and toast Free Comic Book Day to Free Comic Book Day. Free Comic Book uh, Day. 2021 or whenever they start doing it again. <laughs> to Free Comic Book Day. This is pretty good. I like is it. Is it good? Yep. It's tasty. Not I bad. get your review on it, but uh, we're running short of time. Tommy, uh, before we go, can you give me a, a quick uh, rundown of your podcast and tell me how it's going? Because uh, just get, just tell me where everybody can reach you and hear your podcast and, and all that other good stuff. Well... Um, so I am the host of the Cube Command podcast, I, a podcast I do with uh, three of my other friends who are streamers, as I am. We talk about geek news, gaming reviews, movie reviews, anything that piques our interest in the week. It is a weekly podcast, and uh, we're approaching episode 100 in the next few coming weeks. We're on episode 92 right now. Godzilla vs. Kong Review just came out yesterday. And uh, next episode, we're going to stream on my Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Tom Antio. We're going to be reviewing the Mortal Kombat movie. Okay. 
All right, Tommy, thank you very much for joining us here. I really appreciate your time to uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to come in and join us on uh, for a free comic book day and uh, on Drink with Rick. And I've got to pull this thing back up here. Thanks for having me. Okay, that's Tommy Savoya, my son from the Cube Command podcast and his website, cubecommand.com. Anyway, Tommy, thank you for joining us. I really, really appreciate it. Enjoy the wine. Enjoy the wine. I will. It's a good wine. All right. So um, let, me, let me get this situated here just a minute. Okay. All set. That worked out well. So, Gina, if you're still with us, you can see kind of where we're trying to head with this. <laughs> I hope. If you're still with us, um, I think you see where we might be going with this in the future. By the way, the uh, the graphic that you saw in the background, that was done by my daughter, Tia. Tia, uh, also known as CM Cinder, one of the mods in the chat and Twitch. And uh, she did this animated uh, thing with the wine bottles going across in the background. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, she caught that in the background. But uh, we're quite proud of her. She did. I think she did a phenomenal job. She did a, a fabulous job on the wine bottles back there. And by the way, she will do those graphics. I owe her some cash for that, by the way. <laughs> that was not a freebie. <laughs> but she does all. She does all the graphics for Drink with Rick. Uh, the Saturday Night Wine Stream, and she, she does a phenomenal job with it. And uh, she can do graphics for your show too. Well, just contact her. She's on. Uh, uh, she has her own website now. Uh, but uh, yeah, hey, contact her and uh, and see if she might be able to do something for you. She does commissions, and uh, she did that one for me. She's going to be doing a couple more because I have some more stuff to do uh, to have her do here going forward. Anyway, that's uh, my daughter Tia. So, uh, I think, let's see, where, any other comments? Any other comments on Free Comic Book Day or anything else that we were, that we were, uh, Tom Antio says good wine. Yep. And uh, so he likes the wine. Tom Antio liked the wine. So, there you go. Uh, so, Gina, once again, I, I really would like to know what you thought of the wine, if you're still with us. <laughs> I'd like to know what you think of the Stella Rosa wine. It's it's okay. It's you know, it's a dessert wine. It's something to drink if if you're having friends over and people that don't like a lot of dry wines. Because there are people that do not like dry wines. They do not like the traditional whites and the reds and things like that. And who maybe not may not have the maybe not want something that strong. You know, we want something on the lighter side. It's I would say it's okay. There's nothing wrong with the the wine. It's just not. Uh, it's it's not the kind of wine I would drink every day. It's it really. It, it, I prefer, you know, the more traditional, dry reds, and I've mentioned that already. Anyway, so um, I have. I think that's what we got there. Do we have a couple of more national days? I think we had a couple more national days. Uh, yes, you know what? Today, uh, May uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, May second is National Truffle Day. It's also National Life Insurance Day. It's National Infertility Survival Day. That's the Sunday before Mother's Day, and it's National Lemonade Day. That's the first Sunday in May is National Lemonade Day. Now, why is that not a surprise to me? Because May first, you know, it's a nice spring day. This was actually today, at least here was. Uh, I don't know how it was in some other parts of the country, but. Here in Charlotte, it was just a beautiful, gorgeous day out there. It really was. It was just like the perfect day to start off the day of May, to start off the month of May. It really was. It, it really was a, a, an amazing day. And I should have spent more time out there today. I spent just enough time to get in my 15 minutes of vitamin D. <laughs> uh, that was about it. <laughs> and then I went back inside to take a nap. Uh, no, I didn't get the nap. <laughs> I didn't. It, I went inside to take one, but I didn't really get it. So um, uh, Nano uh, ex uh, Echo says, Rick, should I learn English? Should I learn England? Um, you know what? It's up. It's up to you. I think English has, has been kind of an accepted international language, but I don't think there is any rule that says you have to learn English. I don't think there is. I'll tell you what, though. I, I did receive. Um, 
a really nice email from somebody. I want to spend a few more uh, few minutes on that. Before I do that, I want to talk about weather radios just a moment. You know, it was a beautiful day today. It, it was just uh, an absolutely phenomenal day, as I mentioned. The thing is about uh, the weather today was that it's one of those things where it's one of those rare days where it's just perfect. But you know that every day isn't going to be like that. And there are going to be some days that are pretty bad weather-wise. People have asked me, and you know, of course, I, I talk about weather radios a lot. I'm going to talk about them today. You know, June, June 1st is next, mo uh, next month is, is uh, the start of hurricane season, at least here on the, on, on the, uh, uh, on the west uh, coast, uh, east and west coast here. And uh, of the United States, I mean, in the North, North American continent, the Western world, national hurricane season is starting up and uh, you know we, i'm not sure what to expect this year but but we have had some real real bad uh, storms in the past we've had some serious storms come across during the winter and during the early spring now uh, there's no reason to believe that just because i mean you look outside today and it was just perfect but there's no reason to believe that's going to stay that way it's not going to stay that way it's the, the weather's going to change it's constantly changing so it may be perfect one day, the next day it might be just a disaster. So you want to be prepared. Just because it's nice and sunny right now doesn't mean it's going to be a good day tomorrow. So you want to be prepared. You want to be prepared for any kind of a weather emergency, any kind of weather situation. I'm a big believer in that. Go to ready.gov, R-E-A-D-Y.gov, the government website. Go down, pull down the checklist for an emergency weather kit, an emergency, weather, uh, emergency pr uh, preparedness kit. And the third item on the list is going to be a weather radio. Now, they're also going to have a two-way radio on the list, so you'll probably want to get one of those too. But a weather radio, very vital because you really need to stay up with weather, uh, changing weather conditions, especially in an emergency. If it, everything goes out, if you lose power and things like that, uh, you, you may not be able to uh, get a lot of that information. So you need something that's battery-operated, something that you can use in an emergency with a flashlight and that sort of thing rescue uh, uh, features on it, you know, emergency features on it. So uh, I would say go to buy2wayradios.com, go to buy2wayradios.com, get an emergency weather radio to put in your emergency kit, buy2wayradios.com. If you use the promo code wine show, that's W-I-N-E-S-H-O-W, wine show, all one word, use that promo code in the, um, in, in checkout, at checkout, in the shopping cart at checkout, you will save an entire 5% off your order. You'll save 5% off your entire order. That includes not just weather radios, but any kind of radios, FRS, GMRS radios, CB radios, ham radios, marine radios, airband radios, whatever, uh, radio scanners, things like that. You'll save 5% off your entire order. That includes accessories. Um, just go to buy 2 use promo code WINESHOW, and you can save 5% off your order. Now, for full disclosure... I am the product manager for buy2wayradios.com. I don't make any extra for, for pitching this, okay? They're not paying me any, any more for pitching this. I'm not making any money for the show for this. This, uh, this is just a promo code because of work there. I'm giving you a promo code uh, so that you, my viewers and listeners of Drink With Rick on the Saturday Night Wine Stream can take advantage of this sort of thing. This is for you to take advantage of it so you can save a little money it's not saving, I mean, it's costing our company 5%, so it's not saving money for us. It's saving money for you. So take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. Get, get a weather radio and, uh, and put together an emergency weather uh, kit, an emergency kit, and be, be ready for emergencies because there will be some. They're, they'll be out there uh, at some point in time. Okay, so... Um, I think that there's one more thing. Yes, there's one more thing that I wanted to, to cover, and this is uh, the emails. As you, as you know, that you can contact me via email for anything, uh, pretty much if you have any inquiries, you have any questions, uh, any feedback at all whatsoever. I'd love to hear from you. I really do. But I want to tell you that I uh, got one. I got an email from uh, that I want to read because it's, I think it's a very, very cool, very good question. I got this email today, as a matter of fact, earlier today, 
from no this is real email okay <laughs> Um, I got this email today from, uh, from a viewer, and his name is Scott, and I want to read this to you because he asked a very, very good question. Asked a very good question. He says, uh, Hi, Rick. My name is Scott. I've been following your Saturday evening drink with Rick Stream since before your 100th episode, uh, your 100th show, I should say. And he says, Congratulations on that milestone. Well, thank you. Thank you, Scott. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, and you know what, by the way, I couldn't have done it without all of you. I mean, all of you watching and listening, this, this milestone is, is, is your doing, not my doing. It's your, it's your doing, you know, being here uh, every week and, and listening and watching and participating in the chats and, 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 and just, just talking with me, just hanging out. That's, this, is, this is your milestone, too, and it's much appreciated. He says, now that Periscope is gone, I watch on Twitch or YouTube. I don't have an email set up at home, so I can't participate in the chat, but I do have a question. When you say a wine has hints of various fruits and spices, how do they get that flavor in the wine? Is it added or is it a characteristic of the grape, soil, or region grown in? Sorry, but I am a novice when it comes to wine. And um, he says, this evening I will be trying a local 2019 Pinot Noir from Henry of Pelham. And this is, uh, he says, cheers, and that from, from Scott. I have never tried that Pinot Noir, but I'm sure it is, uh, sounds like a good one. I'll have to look that up. I definitely want to look that up and try it out if I can, if I can afford it. Sounds kind of expensive. Henry of Pelham. Anyway, Scott, thank you very much for the email. I really appreciate it. To answer your question, it's, this is a question that will, entire, that will require an entire show to answer. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's, it's a complicated question. It's not an easy question to answer because it's, when, you, when you mentioned the hints of various fruits and spices and uh, whether or not it's added and the characteristic of the grape, the soil, or the region grown in, it's a little bit, it's not so much adding in flavors and spices, although there are some wines where they've done that, and I kind of suspect that might be the case with this wine, this Stella Rosa wine. But in the case of, uh, you know, I can read the, uh, the ingredients real quick. Let's see, let, let's, look at the, let's look at the back here and look at the ingredients for just a moment. Ingredients. Oh, get this, folks. Ingredients. Wine, of course. Water. Grape must. Grape must. They must have grape in here somewhere. Grape must, sugar, all the sugar in this thing. And, and we're not talking about the sugar, the natural sugars that are created due to fermentation. It's, it's they put sugar in here. Uh, no wonder I'm getting a headache from this. Color added, uh, grape skin extracts. So they're adding in grape skin extract uh, from the skin of the grape. Natural flavors, sulfur dioxide, which is an antioxidant, and it says no added juice no added juice what that means they don't add any juices to it to flavor it but it says natural flavors now what does that mean natural flavors and uh i think i find that very very interesting natural flavors what no so if there's no added juice where is the where are the natural flavors coming from now what they say now this is kind of tricky this is a trick trick uh Trick question. Okay, it says no added juice, right? It doesn't mean that there's no juice in it. That means that there's no added juice. In other words, they have natural flavors, which could be juice. They could be could be extracts, could be flavor extracts, but they're naturally derived, and they're derived naturally from those fruits. So they could be fruit extracts, but no added juice juice. In, in, in other words, after all the stuff is in there, they don't add any more juice to it. <laughs> I can't, I guess. That's how I'm reading this. That's how I'm, that's how I'm interpreting this, okay? Don't take my word for it, but uh, that's how I'm, I'm interpreting it. So, having said that, having said that, uh, I would say that um, that this is pretty much a, a wine um, that the flavors in here are not derived from the grapes themselves. This particular wine, however, however, what he said here says when you say a wine has hints of various fruits and spices, how do they get that flavor in the wine? That is an excellent question. Is it added or is it characteristic of the grape, soil, or region grown in? 
That's the key. The last part of that is the key. Yes, it is a characteristic of the grape, the soil, the region it's grown in. It's characteristic. It's it comes from the weather that happens. That's why each vintage can be can taste completely different because it can be a variation of all those things. It can be uh, how the grape matured in that season, the soil it's grown in, how uh, what uh, you know weather wise, what occurred weather wise. It was too wet, too dry, too sunny, too cloudy, too you know all that kind of thing. Those storms, whatever. They, it's a combination of a lot of other things too. Now, some of the fruit flavors and things come from a combination of that. But then you get some other things that are, well, when you start talking about the um, oaky taste and the mustiness of, of some grapes and uh, some of the flavors that are more uh, earthy flavors and things like that, some of that comes from the oak barrels. When If, they're, if they are aged in oak, if they're aged in oak barrels, that's why the, the uh, where the wood comes from, you know, some of these wines make a big deal about where the wood comes from for those oak barrels, and they put it in the oak barrels to to uh, age it, to mature it, and uh, to ferment the wine, and uh, to store it, to get it ready. And the wine draws from that as well. So whether whether uh, whether that comes from the 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 oak, uh, also cedar. You know, you get a sometimes sometimes you'll get a cedar taste in the wine, and that comes from uh, that sort of thing, the, the kind of the cedary uh, taste that you'll get comes from that wood, um, where it's been aged in that wood, in those wood barrels. Now, a lot of wines, a lot of real commercially produced wines that are mass produced, a lot of them are not aged in oak barrels, a lot of them are aged in steel tanks, <coughs> really big steel tanks. In that case, a lot of it happens, it has to do with whatever they're adding in during the fermentation process. Now, a lot of it also comes from the skins of the grape. If they're going to be using, say, with the red wines in particular, if they are, um, you know, adding the skins of the grapes in there with the, with the, uh, uh, with the, the juice. And a lot of that has a lot of bearing on on what kind of taste you get out of the wine. But for the most part, that's one of the things about the wines that are really amazing about it, very special, is that most all of it, and, eh, yeah, like I said, like in a wine, something like this, yeah, they'll probably add some things. But most wines, most genuine wines, the wines that are made, you know, the, the a proper way, you know, just just the old, the old way, they come into these flavors naturally from a combination of the growing process, where they're grown, the region they're grown, the type of grape it is, the weather, how that when they are picked, when they're picked, how are they are handled sometimes. Uh, it comes from the fermentation process, what they're using in the fermentation process, um, how they're fermenting it, how they're storing the wine, you know, and what conditions that's happening. It's a combination of all of those factors that go into that wine that determine what kind of flavors they're going to get out of it. So it's something that's going to taste like has, I'm getting hints of strawberry, I'm getting hints of cherry. They're not putting strawberries or cherries in the wine. That's what you're getting out of the grape and the fermentation process from the grape. Now, once again, I could go on and on about this. There's a lot to it. There's a lot of science. There's a lot of science involved here as well. A lot of chemistry involved. I'm not going to go into that tonight because I am neither a scientist. I'm not a chemist, and I don't play one on TV. But in short, the short answer is, yeah, it's, it's the flavor of the wine comes from the characteristic of the grape, the soil, the region, the weather, the fermentation process. All of those things combined. And that's really how you get the flavors of the grape. I hope that answers your question, Scott. Uh, it's uh, a very, very good question. And it's one that a lot of people spend a lot of time uh, researching and doing. Uh, the, you know, as a matter of fact, they've been doing a lot of research on this sort of thing 
and trying to determine because you know one of the things you're trying to do is trying to determine well, how to get more of this flavor out of the grape or that flavor and and how and, and how to do it more naturally and um, they, they, there's a lot of research that goes into a lot of experimentation that goes into years and years of that of experimentation uh, can go into uh, making a good wine like that years of trial and error so yeah there's a lot that goes into it so uh, Reckless is in the chat. Reckless, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here. And Reckless says, take a breath, the Rick. <laughs> XVM04 says, is this the way to Amarillo? <laughs> Very good. I like that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, time to take a breath. Time to take another swig. And uh, I'm not sure. if I, It might be water here. Okay, Chi, I did not drink this whole bottle of wine. Did not get close. I got through half the bottle, and that's about all I can get. Now, there is something that during the uh, during the video, my wife snuck in. She crept in quietly into the studio, and she handed me this. Yes, she handed me a replacement of this. She really wants me to try this with the wine. She really does. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Before I close this up, give you my summary, uh, we're going to try it. We're going to try it with the with the fork here. And we're going to try a little bit of this. It's called, uh, what's it called? Um, gee, what, what is this called again? Mochi. Mo is it mochi? It's, um, i got to get a closer shot of this. This is, this is uh, great. Let me see. Here we go. All right, so this, yeah, this is uh, really coming apart. I don't know if I can eat this with a fork. I really, it, it's all melt. This is melted too. All right, let me give it a shot. Let me try it. All right. Hmm. Oh wow, actually pretty good. Very tasty. It looks like a mess, but it's actually quite tasty. Um, very good. Okay, let's try it with the wine. Mm. Wait a minute, let's try this one with the wine because it's got, that was not a piece of the, <laughs> I don't think I can get it apart. Let's see if I can do that. It's really, um, it's, it's, it's kind of like pulling skin, <laughs> like pulling skin off a, off a uh, piece of chicken or something. All right, actually, let's give it a shot. Okay, oh, sugar rush, ding, 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 sugar rush. Okay, um, yeah, it was good. It was actually pretty good with the wine. Uh, <coughs> I need a little water here. Okay, it's good, it's good. I, I liked it, I liked it. This is definitely a dessert wine, okay? So here's my final review, because we're going to close it up here. Here's my final review of this wine, the Stella Stella Rosa, 2019. Oh, no, I don't know if it's 2019. It's, a, it's not. A, I don't know why he even said that. Stella Rosa Black. It's not a 20. I don't know. It might be a 2019. It says 2017 on the front, but I think that was the, the year that it was uh, that the company originated. Tastings 90 points gold medal winner, according to the Beverage Testing Institute World Wine Championship. Okay, well, this thing is. Um, I tasted. I, I tasted the rainbow in this thing. I tasted Skittles and and well, I mean, it tasted like Skittles. I, ta I tasted raspberry, blueberry, cherry, strawberry, all kinds of berries in it, uh, and a little chocolate. Had a chocolate, although there's no chocolate in Skittles. I, I got a little bit of chocolate in there, and um, it's it's yeah, it's a little tannic, not much. It's mostly it's. It's semi-sweet. It's a semi-sweet wine. It's not dry at all. Okay, it's semi-sweet. And it is kind of a medium... Uh, medium... It's kind of a medium... Uh, well, it's not a, it's not a bold or, or a very light wine. It's just kind of medium. I, I, there's really not much of a finish to it, but it does go down sweet and it stays kind of sweet uh, in your mouth later. So... Uh, I'm going to say that this wine goes, we tried it with all this stuff here. Let me show you. We tried it with all this stuff. 
uh, seriously, this is uh, this is actually pretty good here. This uh, whatever this is, mochi. Um, it, it was not great with the steak. I mean, I, I, this would not be my first choice to pair with a steak. Pizza. No. Um, the the cheese though the cheeses it went pretty well with it, it went okay with the cheddar and with the the Toscano with the uh, creamy coastal Syrah and it went it went okay with the Dubliner the Ireland cheese that wasn't too bad and it, it went very well with this dessert okay the it went very well with this mochi dessert which uh, is is really really good uh, by by itself the dessert's really good on its own. My final review is, I think this is definitely a dessert wine. 5% alcohol by volume. Yeah, I blame myself on the steaks, not really the wine. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all me. It's all my, it's all on me. This show, this show, any mistakes, anything that goes wrong on this show, that's on me. Because I am the host. All right, so uh, anyway, my final review on it is, uh, it's okay for a dessert wine. Uh, some of the other wines were actually pretty decent, but as dessert wines, not really as a meal. Uh, but some people do like that. Some people want a meal with a with a kind of a dessert kind of wine like this. It goes really well with dessert. Serve it with a dessert. I think it's it's, it's going to be fine. Um, I never found out from Gina whether she why she didn't particularly like it. I would have very would be very interested in finding out uh, why uh, why she didn't care for it. She says she's never liked any Stella Rosa she's had to date. So um, I'd like to know her take on it uh, because I value her take. And she's also a wine aficionado. She knows her wines. My sister definitely knows her wines. And uh, I, that's one reason why we're doing this testing here because I want to try to bring her on at some point. And am I spilling the beans here? I do want to try to. We, we talked about it before. She came into some wine and... I thought, wouldn't it be kind of fun if we had her on the show sometime and, and had her review the wines? I think it would be kind of cool. So I'm trying to set that up here, and that's we're doing some testing with Tommy the last couple of weeks. So we, maybe we can do that, maybe with a few other people. Maybe we have other people on. Maybe we can have you on. That would be kind of fun, huh? You know, come on and, and get your take on some wines. Anyway, so I think that does it for this episode. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. I want to thank... My good friend Ed for being here. Oh, by the way, I almost, I almost missed the, this, this book. This is the book I was talking about. 1001 Wines You Must Taste Before You Die. That This is an awesome, awesome book filled with a lot of great, uh, a lot of great wines, pictures, and, and interesting facts about wine. Uh, I'm going through this. It's a big book to go through. It's going to take me a while. But uh, when I'm done, I want to see if I can give a review of the book. Uh, it, it, this is an awesome book, an awesome gift. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, my good friend Ed, for this book. I want to thank you for being here tonight, my lovely wife, Chi. Thank you for the second take, for the take two on the dessert, by the way, also, and everything else you do for me. I really do appreciate it. And everybody else who join in, uh, those who are watching but didn't actually say anything, but thank you for being here. I appreciate it, as always. Uh, Ed says, uh, are you... Leaving enough for chi to try. Enough of the wine? Yes, I am. I am indeed, Ed. Um, I'm, I'm leaving some. For, I'm leaving her half the bottle. I'm leaving her half the bottle. There's half the bottle right there. Yeah, the lower half. <laughs> so uh, anyway, thank you for for being here, all of you, and also everyone who joined me tonight on uh, Twitch. Boy, uh, uh, let's see if I can hit everybody here tonight as far as uh, get everybody in here. I don't mean literally hit. I mean, get every. never mind. Uh, I want to thank uh, Nano E Echo ZZ for th being here. And um, I really, really appreciate it. XVM04, thank you for being here also. You must, oh, your uh, mom's sentiment, thank you. Uh, my eyesight, she's getting, uh, your mom's sentiment, thank you for being here. And I uh, hope you have a great evening and great what, the rest of the week. Hope you had a lot of fun here. And uh, Sam Cinder, of course, Tom Antio, and uh, who else joined me here? Well, let's see if I can get through here. Uh, XBM04, I got you in there. And uh, who? I know where there are other people that were dropping in and out of here. Where are they? 
Oh, uh, Regla, uh, Regulus uh, is in there. Hey, Rick, how's it hanging? Big man. Okay, Regulus, thanks. For, I missed you. How did I miss you? And Tar Heels 218, now how did I miss you? See, I got the chat going here, but for some reason, sometimes it stops scrolling. And I don't see everybody in there. But anyway, a uh, big shout out to Regulus and to Tar Heels 218. He says, hey, Rick, what is today's giveaway? Uh, you know what? I didn't really have a giveaway to speak of, but I'm glad you asked. Because uh, I tell you what, I want to give away a dad joke book and a uh, 500 plus dad joke book. You know what? I want to give one away so bad. I want to give one away to you. C tell you what, just for saying it, just because you asked, um, Tar Heels 218, you just won a 500 plus dad joke book just because, just because uh, I've gotten them here and because I can give them away. Let me show you what this looks like. It's fun. Dad joke book. I'll try not to get any stuff on it here. Um, dad joke, 500 plus dad jokes. Funny, clean, corny, and just plain silly jokes. I'm going to give you this copy. Just for showing up and just for saying, hey, you got anything to give away? Yes, I do. I've got this to give away, and I'm giving it away to you tonight. Okay? That's for I'm setting this aside so I can do that. Anyway, Tar Hill, uh, what, what I'd like for you to do... Since you're Tar Heels, I would take it you are in North Carolina, so that should be an easy, easy, uh, easy uh, one there. Um, send it. I was trying to set this up, but I got to do something about these lower thirds, folks. I really do. Send it uh, your a valid uh, shipping address. It, you know, don't worry. I'm not going to do anything funny with it. I'm just going to send you the book, uh, which could be funny. The book could be funny. <laughs> Send it to Rick at SavoyaMedia.com, Rick at S-A-V-O-I-A-M-E-D-I-A.com. Make sure I get it, and uh, and I'll send you out this. I've got it set aside. I can send this book out to you. Thanks for being here tonight, by the way. And uh, Regulus, also, thank you for being here. And uh, what else to say? Uh, Nano uh, go ZZ, once again, thank you for being here. And anyone else I missed? Anyone else I missed here? Uh, I hope not. If I did, mods, let me know. Um but uh, I really appreciate all of you for being here with me tonight. Anybody on YouTube that showed up, by the way? Ah, it's quiet on YouTube tonight. Anyway, if you're watching me on YouTube, thank you also. Here's to all of you. Here's to all of you. And uh, watching tonight and listening to the podcast later. I do appreciate it. I couldn't do any of this without you. Thank you. And I do mean that. To you. Anyway. We're going to close it up now. Thank you for being here with me tonight. I do want to remind you, please do not drink and drive. And I think earlier tonight, I think I gave you a prime reason why. Do not drink and drive. Drink in the comfort of your home, your apartment, your hotel room, your uh, wherever you are. Okay? Call an Uber, call a Lyft, call a cab if you have to, call a friend. Just stay where you are for the evening. Do not drink and drive. Do not text and drive because that's also extremely dangerous. Because I want you to have a great week. But most of all, I want you to have a safe week. So you can all join me here again next week on the Saturday Night Wine Stream. And we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.